Hey everybody, we're doing a quick video tonight about using the step sequencer on an audio track. I've made a few videos about this in the past and all of the information in those videos is still true. You can route it through the environment, but I had a good exchange with Edgar over at Music Tech Explained and uh, he pointed out a little bit of an easier way to do this. And uh, in thinking about what he showed me, I found what I consider the easiest way to do this. And so I want to show you the easiest way to use the step sequencer to control automation on an audio track. And this is one of the great mysteries of Logic. We're diving pretty deep in some of the historical things that Logic can do. Uh, let me show you on this track real quick. I've got just, I was testing this out on multiple tracks, uh, just double checking everything. Let me push play. In the mixer, you can see the EQ curve here moving around. Right? And so if I go into automation on the track here, you'll see there's no automation. We would see some lines here or some of them activated down here, and there are not. So it's not automation. And if I go into the environment, you'll see that nothing is connected to this track whatsoever. Uh, we don't have any like hidden things in here automating that information. I don't have any hidden tracks or anything like that that's doing this. So how then is that EQ parameter being moved? Uh, that was, that's a great question. And the, the answer is simple. The answer is, is that we have on this track one of the step sequencer regions, and it's just layered with that audio file. So you can have multiple things on the audio track simultaneously. Pretty cool, right? So instead of having to have a separate track or something along those lines, we can literally just come in and, um, and add that on. So how do we do that? This was what originally Edgar had shown, or I mean, I've used the this feature before where you can have multiple tracks going to the same destination or essentially attached to the same item. So for instance, if I have another audio file here uh, and this one is the Champagne Dream Synth, I can right click on this, reassign the track uh, to the same thing. So both of these are now the same track. If I push play, you'll see audio on both of those. They're just two instances of the exact same thing. So once you have that, and this is the piece that I hadn't ever thought of, um, and this is what Edgar showed me, that you can come right click out here and say, create a pattern region. And I'd never thought about using that on an audio track. I just hadn't thought about doing it that way. So if we do it this way, then anything that I do inside this pattern is going to that instrument. So I've got audio on one of these and I've got this pattern on the other one. It's actually a really slick thing you can do. So I could come through and choose any of my EQ parameters. So let's do peak four frequency, turn them all on. And in this case, let's go down and then I can create some sort of pattern like that of all the frequencies, right? So then on this main one, um, let's open up the EQ, push play. Now I've got two of these going back and forth. Perfect. So I'm just going to zero that out. So it's not actually doing anything, but that pattern is being sent as automation data into that uh, plugin on the track. Super awesome way to do it. But even more simply, we can just create the pattern region on the actual track, not have to create a second audio track and reassign it to the original or anything. Um, I can literally just do this and, um, and pull it over onto it, right? Just like that. Um, if we wanted to, I think we could probably also um, change some of the other parameters of this, but we, let's not get, let's not do too much. Um, so dragging it over like that and then programming it, 
um, to whatever we want on that track. In this case, you know, we could do a similar thing uh, where peak four, just like I had before. Um, let's turn all of those on and then have it go back down. There we go. Right? So now on this, let's see if we have both of them still moving. So technically we've got both of those step sequencer things in the exact same place um, going around. So how do we get to edit this then? Uh, that's one of the trickier parts. And that was the part at first, I wasn't sure how easy that would be. And in reality, um, if you click on this with the shift key, you can cycle through any of these regions. So I can go between those two. I'm just holding the shift key on my keyboard and clicking on the region. And it takes me through various things there. So, and once that's selected, I can click on the other track um, and we can do a similar thing too if we want. But so here, shift click on that one and it'll bring up what I have on that one. So they just stay layered. The other really important thing with this, if you are creating a pattern region, uh, you wanna make sure your drag is set to overlap. If it's set to no overlap, then it will just delete the audio. But if we do it this way, then both of those can coexist simultaneously. This actually makes it in some ways far more like something like FL Studio, which has separate automation files from its audio files. In a way, it's kind of related to that same workflow, but we can move these around. Uh, if you like the pattern you have, but you're like, I wanna just offset that by like a little bit, you can offset it just by moving it around like that. And both of those will happen simultaneously. Awesome little technique here. Uh, thanks again to Edgar for like bringing this up. The one piece that I just had been missing was creating the pattern region on any track. Once I realized that you could do that, I thought, you know what? We don't even need two different tracks or reassigning things. We can just do this right on top of our audio files on our audio tracks. And it gives us this cool pattern based automation tool that we can use with our audio regions in a million different ways. I mean, this is gonna be a really cool new tool in my toolkit for sure. Okay, that's it. I just wanna show you that. Hope you're having a great week and we'll have another video coming soon.